Romans chapter 15. Uh, I want to read the first 13 verses this morning and leave you with just a few thoughts as we close out our week. I have thoroughly enjoyed um, our, our time together this week. Um, I've really been challenged um, by the things that we've studied, and I hope that it's been good for you <clears throat> as well. You know, for our brethren at Kenwood, um, having the last couple of days just been so encouraging. Um, seeing our children praising God, our, our young boys standing before us and offering the invitation for the first time, I, I have just been just so encouraged. It's, it's been an exhausting couple of weeks for, for me, um, just a lot going on. And then with the passing of my grandmother this week, um, I'll be preaching her funeral this coming Saturday. And so just a, a lot on my mind and just, um, just a little bit exhausted, but my spirit has certainly been revived um, this week as I have watched so many young people. We, we've just had incredible numbers um, this week, numbers of young people. I think in the middle class, middle school class uh, last evening and the night before, like nine, 10, I may have had in 11 or 12 um, last night. I'm um, just so encouraging. Um, it's just, just been a wonderful week. Uh, I'm really looking forward to our time uh, together tonight. Let's read this text together. Romans chapter 15. Read the first 13 verses with me. Now we who are strong ought to bear the weaknesses of those without strength and not just please ourselves. Each of us is to please his neighbor for his good, to his edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatever was written in earlier times were written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. And may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus, so that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore accept one another, just as Christ also accepted us to the glory of God. For I say that Christ has become a servant to the circumcision on behalf of the truth of God to confirm the promises given to the fathers. For the Gentiles to glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, therefore I will give praise to you among the Gentiles, and I will sing your name. Again, he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the peoples praise him. Again, Isaiah says, There shall come from the root of Jesse, and he who arises to rule over the Gentiles, and him shall the Gentiles hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace of believing, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to tackle all of our reading this morning. I would encourage you, to, as always, to spend some time with these things, obviously. Uh, Paul here and places emphasis on uh, what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has done by uh, way of bringing the Gentiles in, and what a great blessing um, that is. We certainly dealing with the relationship between these Jewish and, and Gentile Christians. You know, Christ, the perfect example, how different, how different would things be for us, brethren, if Christ had chosen to please himself? Um, how different would they be if, uh, how different would things be by way of our relationships one with another if, if we were more intentional by way of pleasing one another, um, seeking the edification of others as opposed to pleasing ourselves. Certainly Christ, the perfect example um, uh, of this type of unselfish um, way of thinking and doing. You know, obviously, understanding the context of what we've been studying this week, consider the following statement. In matters of doctrine, we must always yield to Christ. In matters of liberty, as we've been discussing over the last several days, we must yield to others. Brethren, it is imperative that we be united. All of us come from different backgrounds. We bring different things with us. We're at different levels of knowledge and maturity. But it is possible for us to be of the same mind with one another, according to Christ Jesus. I love verse 6. It's a beautiful picture of what we ought to be as the people of God. He talks about with one accord, with one voice, glorifying our God together. 
And brethren, let's be mindful of one another. Let's bear with one another. Let's have the ability to, to differentiate between that which is doctrine and that which is matters of, of liberty. And let's be humble enough, wise enough, have enough love and respect for, for one another to be willing to yield to our brothers and sisters in Christ with one accord, with one voice, glorifying our God. Look to Jesus, right? A perfect example of one who was all about pleasing others for their edification as opposed to pleasing himself. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, we are so thankful for this day and all our many blessings, Father, for this week, for what it has been by way of your people at Kenwood as we've been able to be together and edify and strengthen our children. Father, we pray for our children. Father, you know the world that they are living in, the culture that they are surrounded in. So many challenges lay ahead for, for us as parents and for them. And Father, we just ask that you would be there with us. That as we seek your will, that you would bless us and bless them. And Father, we're just so thankful for our kids, the great blessing they are. And just ask that you would be with them. Father, bless us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.